like to introduce our speaker and our speaker is Mark and uh, in his darker darker days he had several spiritual experiences and became aware of a deep stillness that is home to a living awareness of unconditional love and he calls it the place and these experiences that he's had have influenced his life greatly so please welcome. Take a walk in nature. We close our eyes. We hear the birds. There's something beautiful about the trees. Because they don't really resist life. They just go with it. And somehow we can feel that. And it's calming for us. And we walk deeper into the woods, into the forest. And we see a splendor tree. It's huge. And it calls to us. So we walk towards that tree. And we look up and it's miles high. The trunk is the size of a house. And the tree has an opening, a hollow. It's a little bit like a door. And we enter the hollow and step inside the tree. And we find ourselves standing in a chamber. And above the chamber is the night sky, filled with stars and a bright moon, a grand moon, a full moon. And in the center of the chamber is a treasure chest. Hmm, a treasure chest. And you slowly approach the chest in your imagination and you open it. And to your surprise, there is no treasure. Inside the chest is cool water and you can feel the breeze coming off the water. And as you look into the chest at the water surface, you see the moon's reflection in the stillness of the water. Your eyes focus on the moon's reflection. It's so big, so full, so bright and you just stare at it for a while seeing the beauty of it and then suddenly another reflection appears it appears in the water 
and it stares back at you. Something you never saw before. Someone beautiful. You begin to feel uncomfortable with the beauty of the figure gazing at you. So you look away, but something calls you to look again. And so you look back into the, into the eyes of the figure. And there you are. And let's take a quiet moment to peer into the beauty of yourself reflected on that water for about one minute. And let's slowly feel our feet on the floor, wiggle our toes. It's fun to see the beauty of yourself, but now you can open up your eyes and see the beauty of everyone else too. Hi everyone. There's lots of beauty in this room today. And um, this is rather of a long sermon or a long lesson so I'm appreciating everyone's cooperation to uh, shorten things up a little bit on the front end. And in today's lesson, um, I'm going to talk, uh, quote some things from Eric Butterworth. Butterworth. We're going to do one activity here of making a treasure chest. And then we're going, I'm going to talk a few more minutes, and then we're going to do another activity. So there will be two activities today. These treasure chests came from a, a, a business that I was trying to get off the ground, and they never got off the ground and never sold. So what am I going to do with all these treasure chests? And um, so today you'll find, you'll find out. <laughs> okay, Eric Butterworth, he wrote a book, Discover the Power Within You. And I was amazed at some of the things that I read in that book. He says that we made a god out of a prophet, worshipped him, and built monuments to him. And the people who, in religion, in traditional religions, trapped themselves into a religion that no longer had a within. So I think what he was saying is we went outside ourselves uh, to find divinity. And I so much relate to that because I've spent a lot of my life going outside myself to find myself. Jesus in the Bible was a little more direct than Eric Butterworth. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. And Butterworth said that Jesus was a window that pointed to our divinity. And he says in his book that Jesus created a window so that we can look through it together. Um, instead, traditional Christian religions became a ritual of worshiping the window instead of looking through the window. And that is an inward journey to our own divinity. He continues, 
Now almost no one sees through the window. And it's become an object instead of a medium. It is adorned with gold and gems. It is made into an altar. And millions of devotees kneel before the window. But Jesus was the way shower to the great within. And Jesus said, follow me. And when he said, follow me, he was referring to the inward journey. Follow me to the acceptance of a deeper consciousness that he achieved and wanted to show us that we could achieve that too. And when Jesus became the object of worship, he ceased to be the way shower of our own self-realization and our self-unfoldment. And I'm going to make a little adjustment here. Here. So let this be a church where we can support each other in cleaning the window of centuries, perhaps, of dust and dirt, and so that we can begin to look through the window into what? Well, you'll have to answer that yourself, because that's part of our personal journeys. Um, Eric also talks about Zen Buddhism, which uses the imagery of a moon reflected in the water. He said that when there is no moon, there is no reflection in the water. And when there is no water, there is no reflection of the moon. And that the moon has meaning because the water has meaning. And the water has meaning because the moon has meaning. So here we are in duality, the world of two, where we kind of need two of each other to also see the meaning that points to the oneness of each other. And that the universe has meaning because we have meaning, if you want to extrapolate that idea, and that we have meaning because the universe has meaning. And the word meaning points to our inward divinity, that we recognize our oneness of each other and ourself in the realm of two. And so we are connected somehow. And when we look through the window, we can see our connection with, with the moon, with the light, and then with, with, with each other. And I believe Jesus was in total unity with the beauty of that moon, of that reflection, because he was in unity with God. He achieved something amazing and said that we could go there too and start our own journey. And I believe Jesus was aware of the moon or God, the shining, shining a light, and that he was also one with the water that reflected the light of God, that reflected the light of God's beauty. And that's all he saw. He was so focused that he saw nothing else. Jesus said um, in, the, in the Bible that I ha I've been with you all this time, he was talking to one of his apostles, and still you do not know me. Anyone who has seen me, with a capital M, has seen the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own. Instead, it is the Father dwelling in me, performing his works. And I see that in a lot of 12-step programs where people have come to their bottom and say, nothing's working. Finally, I'll let you do your thing, God. And, and, and then suddenly things start working in their lives. And that's kind of a theme of 12-step people. But it doesn't have to be that way always. We don't have to go to our bottom. We can get a running start here in this, in this sanctuary. Um, so I believe that when we go inward and see with love's eyes, we glimpse beauty and it's meaningful. And Eric Butterworth is saying that Jesus was pointing to the inward still water that allows the reflection of light and love within us, that's waiting for us to see it. Now, there was a speaker here a couple of weeks ago. His name was Mike. I don't remember his last name, but I was impressed with him. And he spoke um, three weeks ago here at Unity of a story of a whale that was tangled in a net and that a man was working on a rescue team, entered the water with his team, and the man began cutting away the net 
and the frayed ropes. And while he was cutting the net to set the whale free, <laughs> the whale never took his eyes off of him. So imagine cutting the, the whale free and seeing these big eyes just constantly following you as you're moving up uh, by the side of that wheel, cutting the net. And he said something passed between them because the man said, in those moments, he became changed. He became changed. <laughs> and, and once the wheel was free, the wheel gently swam around him. So there was meaning in that experience something meaningful. And I'm guessing that what was meaningful in that moment was that there was a recognition of each other's divinity in each other that was reflected in the water on that day. Two, li two lives uniting and seeing the one light that was being shared between them. And the, sh the sharing of that light was with each other. And so in this world of two, a big part of that, sharing that light with each other is part of our humanity. It's what makes us human and one of the most important things of our humanity. I believe Jesus saw himself everywhere because he was that light that was reflected everywhere and in everyone. And you are also this light. He became one with the moon's, the moon's light that reflected its beauty everywhere. And that's all he saw. And when he saw, and those are memorable moments. And like the whale, when we have those moments, they're memory, they're, they're memorable. When we feel loved and seen, they're memorable. And Butterworth wrote that a man and a woman are never completely satisfied with themselves or the world until they find that road to their own treasure, to their own Mount Olympus, to meet the divinity within, to meet the moon reflecting within our hearts. And the Course of Love says it's an, it's, it is awareness that of what is beyond form that allows form to become more. And that awareness is being one with our own divinity that is always aware, that that place that's right here is, is aware and sharing that awareness with us, which is why we even recognize ourselves when we look in the window. How close is God? How close is this, this awareness of love? And the Course of Miracles, the Course of Love continues, your new identity, the act of becoming the elevated self of form beyond the body, beyond the mind, beyond time. And now being whole is being all that you are. Being whole is being present as all you are. And when this occurs, one is being with the Father. And I want to do part of my experiment today, which is an experiment, is to try to touch on those fringes. Um, Eric Butterworth says that Jesus did not set the Christ standard, that he simply followed it, that it was always here. And in following, and in following that standard, what happens? What happens in our lives? Well, going back to the story, a man set a free whale, set a whale free into his freedom. And the whale was set free and the man was changed. And the man followed something meaningful, a sort of unity. And in those moments, he glimpsed not only his own divinity, but the whales too, and vice versa. So the story, you know, he talks about the story of a man who um, asked, where do I go, or how do I find Mount Olympus? You know, that, where do I find those pink moments? And the wise man replied, just make every step you take go in that direction. And so we're going to take some steps today to go in that direction and make a treasure chest. I'm going to ask if I can trade. Actually, you, you can sit there. I'm going to come around, and I'm going to move the camera. 
can we change the camera to the um, piano, the music camera? And I'm going to change it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the Zoomers first, make them a treasure chest. And then I would like everyone to come over here. Treasures in here. You can fill your treasure chest with. So this is an activity. I would like to keep it down to about 10 minutes. So I want to move it as quickly as I can because we have another exercise. But if it's longer than 10 minutes, then I ask you to be patient <laughs> with the unfolding of this and uh, have some fun with it. Um, a man gave these to me, and he said he traveled to Egypt, and he was walking the desert and fell into a chamber, and there was all these skeletons, and in the middle were these little things, and he wanted me to have them so that I can give them to you. So can I put one of these? Hang on. So this is what he was talking about. I don't know if you can see that. Can I put one of these in your treasure chest? Absolutely. Okay. There's one for Leslie. Taria, I'm going to give you uh, this color. Is this okay? Beautiful. Thank you. Um, Bellin, is there a particular color you might like? Uh, I'll, which I'll let you choose. Close your eyes and pick one. Well, I'm going to give you blue. Okay. And I'm also going to give you um, clear. Okie doke. All right, and we have some pennies here, and these are brand new pennies, so they're very shiny. Um, so I'm gonna put a few, few of these in. And I hope you guys are watching, because you guys will be doing the same thing with your treasure chest, especially you, Jack. Um, you'll be filling your treasure chest really high, because there's lots of beauty in there. I, I, I once heard someone say, you know, if you're feeling bad, look at something shiny and you'll feel better. And so maybe there will be a lot of shiny things in this treasure chest that you can, uh, on those rare occasions where you feel a little bit down, you can uh, look at your treasure. There's, there's a little play here that's going to, uh, be fo I'll be fooling a lot of people here with that, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, to, to know me is to know my humor. So um, we also have some marbles, and they're not really marbles, they're clear pearls from ancient shell, shells that no one really knows about them. Do you guys see them, these marbles? Can I put some of these in your treasure chest? Yes. All right. Absolutely. Now, I like this one, because this is a black pearl, if you look at it. They're very rare. So I'm gonna give each one of you a black pearl if I can find one. I only found, oh, there's another one. Well, we don't have any more black ones. Sorry, Bellin. So I'm just gonna give you, um, <laughs> oh, there's a black one. There we go. And we also have some diamonds here and some marbles. And I'm going to put these diamonds, a few of these diamonds in and marbles. Now, I have one of these things. Do you see this? Do you see this here? Uh-huh. Who would like that? Absolutely. Do you like it? OK. <laughs> I, I also have a treasure chest here, too. I don't know if you can see that. So we, you can have a treasure in the treasure chest. Which one would like that? Uh, I would. I would. All right, Taria, I mean, Leslie. Uh -huh. And what else do we have here? Um, the chest within the chest. Thank you. The cream liquid vials is soap. Would you like some soap? You can take it with you if you ever are in need of soap. Yeah. <laughs> we, I also have some um, gold. The, this is solid gold. Um, I'll put one in Bellin's. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I never refuse. <laughs> never refuse gold. Yeah. And we also have some crystals here. These are actually real crystals. And so does anyone not want a crystal? I hear they have healing properties. Is that, is that true? Yes, mm -hmm. it is. All right. So I'm going to put a couple there, one there, two th there's Leslie, you had some real small crystals, so I'm going to give you a few more. Thank you. 
There's a nice crystal for you. And we have some fossils here. We have some anamites, I think they're called ammonites. They're 350 million years old. Um, I'm going to put a few of those in. <laughs> and we have some brand new nickels. Do you, do you mind if I just play with your treasure chest? You guys can just watch me play. And, 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 because I, it feels like I'm taking over now. I said, the heck with you guys. I'll just put what I want in your treasure chest. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just won the lottery. Wow. Woohoo. Now, we do have some bullion that was discovered underwater um, by some recent pioneers. And we have three different colors. Leslie, what color would you like? Uh, gold. Okay. And Taria, what color would you like? I don't see what my choices are. Oh, I like gold. Gold. Yeah. And Bellin, we have you gold. Pick. So you pick. I'll I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick gold. And we also have some chains here. And these are golden chains. So I'm going to put those in your treasure chest. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You guys are so um, abundantly rich. We also have some gold. Actually, it's fool's gold. But I'm going to pretend it's real gold because I'm going to try the fool you. <laughs> so we'll put some of that in. And um, we also have some fossils here from a, a duckbell platypus. We have some shark teeth. And I'm just going to put some more, I'm going to put some rubies in here. And I'm just going to finish them off from the top. So thank you for letting me make your treasures. For everyone else, we have some treasure chests here. Pick your chest and then pick your chest and then feel free to free it. Feel free to fill it. We have tons of marbles. So you want to probably go heavy on the marbles because that's great filler. And then um, you can spice it up with the other things. <laughs> um, guys, I'm going to keep these treasure chests here, and so, Tria, I'll be seeing you sometime in the near future. But Leslie, um, your name is on the treasure chest, and Bellin, your name is on the treasure chest. Thank I'm going to you. give you one of these, so that when you do come in, you can pick it up. Thank you, thank you. I'm very excited. Thank you. Yeah, I know. The treasure hunters. Fill those treasures to the brim, really. Do not hold back. But in Arizona, there's a place where there's lots of fossils, and a man found a fossil of a duck-billed platypus, and he sold little pieces of the bone on um, eBay, and there's some pieces there if you want. You know what I'm thinking, Mark, that as we're going around, yeah, I mean, you picked for us, but we were also choosing. It's like that's what the world holds for us, all this abundance. All we have to do is look for it and see it. Yes, yes. And I love that because that's the beginning of the inward journey. In order for you to see the abundance outside of yourself, you need to see the abundance of love inside of yourself. And that love then becomes a reflection of all the abundance outside of yourself. So, and the, the danger is that we can get so hooked on these treasure chests. I'm the treasure chest, we, you know, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes but not to identify solely with the form, but also recognize the feelings that are pointing to something divine. And basically that's what this is about. <laughs> I, just, I just told you the ending, and it's not the ending. <laughs> um, we have plenty of marbles left, we have gold chains. Those diamonds came from um, the desert of a tomb somewhere, and I think they're extremely valuable. And while people are filling their treasure chest, 
listen in with me, and I'm going to move on with my lesson. Um, the Course of Love says, thinking without form is a harbinger of unity, and thoughts joined in unity see beauty. And so when we see the beauty of our treasure, which is a form, we just created a form, and there is, and when we see that beauty, we expand with it a little bit, at a, perhaps at a feeling level. We touch on something within, within ourselves at a feeling level. And so let's be cognizant of the awareness of our treasure and the beauty of it. And then we can uh, step into another awareness that along the process of making that treasure, we had an, different experiences that were not of form, but they were kind of invisible. And some of those experiences perhaps were fun, perhaps joy. There was certainly a sense of collaboration. There was perhaps some connection as some people showed their treasure chest to others. There was an appreciation. There was a sense that we matter, perhaps, or that we were being considered. Um, and perhaps my hope is that there was a sense of belonging or a sense of community forming. And these, these thoughts, the energy behind these thoughts are formless energies that we get, we get to name. And so let's be aware of the treasure. Let's be aware of the process that we went through that got us to the treasure and that the process was equally important. Some people say that the process is more important than the treasure itself because the joy and the belonging and the connection and the mattering are part of our divine nature. They are little glimpses of the unity that is formless, qualities of the divine that brings us together, kind of like that man cutting the rope from the whale. There was a, a unity involved in that. And so I want to start in another activity. Um, and that as we expand in our awareness to the form, and this is my treasure, to the process of the form, the joy and the fun along the way, the intangible. And now I want to go into something else where um, we see more deeply. And this is a little experimental here, so I'm not sure if this is going to work, but the Course of Love says, thoughts joined in unity can be likened to thinking without thought. That's a little confusing to me, but I think I understand a little bit of that. And the Course of Love continues that thoughts joined can be likened to imagination, which happened a lot here today, and they can be likened to love. The next acti activity is, is that we are going to cup our hands like this. And I'm going to ask everyone to cup your hands. And imagine that we are holding water in our hands. And in the reflection of that water, imagine that we are seeing our treasure chest that we just built, that we just created. We can see the beauty of that treasure chest reflected in that water. And let's just take a, a second or two to notice that. Oh, I see there's something missing in my treasure. Um, can you grab another penny for me? Thanks. There it is. Plop. It's in, not only is it in the reflection of the surface of the water, it's actually in my hand as well. And now let's imagine that as we look into the water within our cupped hands, we see our reflection, and it's beautiful. And let's take a few minutes to see our reflection. Now, this is something I want you to notice. Notice what you are feeling, because some people feel uncomfortable with seeing the beauty of themselves. And that's important to notice that feeling, because there's lots of room, lots of treasure underneath that trying to come out, trying to come out and say, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. You're wonderful. Um, in my experiences with this place, um, I was seeing so incredible beautiful that I, had, I said no to it. I'm not that beautiful. And it's taken me a long time to allow that beauty 
that divine beauty that was seeing me and seeing with it, to seeing myself with it. Um, so notice your feelings, that seeing your beauty reflected in the palm of your own hands. And let's take a moment. And as we hold the beauty of ourselves, now let's glance at each other and become aware of every person in this room that is holding their own beauty. Okay? And I'm looking at the Zoomers now, and I'm seeing Tria, Bellin, Leslie, holding, and I'm seeing the beauty of yourself that you are holding. And so let's look around and glimpse each other. Well, I see the beauty. I see the beauty of yourself in there. And so we're, we're, we're looking at each other's beauty, and we're seeing that beautiful too. Jack, I see the beauty of that clipper in your hand. <laughs> Jack's not playing. <laughs> I see the beauty of yourself in those hands that you're holding. Uh, actually, I'm looking at the war. Well, I, all I see is beauty from, what I, from, from my perspective. And so we hold that, we hold the beauty of ourselves, and we're glancing at each other's beauty, and then we become aware that every person in the Zoom and in this room is holding their own beauty. And each of us can also see each other's beauty. And we are, as we are looking at each other's beauty in our cupped hands, notice the feelings as we are witnessing each other. And now let's expand our awareness even further and meet the realization that everyone's beauty is also your beauty. That I am not only holding my beauty, but I am holding yours too. And this is where the unity comes in. And this is, you know, as I say that, I feel the, <laughs> a little bit of the emotion come up um, because that connection is so important to me because I lived a lot of loneliness in my life. And so when I come to that connection that we are somehow together and make this manifest and become aware of that, that I hold my beauty I hold your beauty, and all the while you have been holding your beauty and my beauty too. And in this moment of unity, we are not seeing with our physical eyes anymore. We are seeing with God's eyes. We are looking through the window that Jesus was pointing to. We are holding the beauty of our reflection and each other's reflection, which is a reflection of love, of divinity. And this is the real treasure it had nothing to do with the physical treasure that we just created. Although it was nice to create it, it was the object. It was fun all along the way. But when we can use that as a stepping stone for a greater awareness. And this is why looking through that window is an inside job. What are we identified with? Are we identified with the form? Or are we identified with the steps that brought us to the form? Are we identified with the beauty? And are we holding that sense of beauty? So in conclusion, I want to say that the Course of Miracles says, the Course of Miracles, which is different than the Course of Love, says how near we are to one another as we go to God. And as we go to God, we go to unity. And the Course of Love says, Becoming the elevated self of form, the wholeness of being is what lies beyond the body and mind and form and time. And it continues that unity is not a place or a thing, but a realm of the one hearts, of the one heart and the one mind. The realm of the formless and timelessness. But also in the realm of connectedness and connection of what binds all our lives in creation with the Creator. So I see you beautiful. And part of my exercise is, can you pass me that? Is, that? is that my treasure? Here's my treasure. Part of this treasure is that I have a lot of special things in my treasure because I had access to everything before you did, so I took the best stuff. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I'm being honest. And including... <laughs> <laughs> including this, this, 
And so now, now here's the stretch. What am I identified with? And what do I choose to be identified with? So when I'm ready to give this treasure away, I'm going to give it away because the treasure is seeing the beauty in each other and in me. So Leslie, you have a brother? Yes. I would like to give this treasure to him. Do you think he'll accept it from me? Uh, yes. Okay. So now I'm identified to, with what? I'm ready to let go of the form and try to be totally identified with the Christ within. And that's my lesson. Thank you. I'll hold this for you, Leslie. Thank you. A long time ago, I was involved, well, still am, in some of the medicine ways of uh, Native Americans. And uh, this uh, story, a long, long time ago, they were, uh, the medicine men were having a very serious sacred ceremony. And, and he noticed that the people were so serious that they had really closed themselves off to any uh, uh, guidance from, from the, the Great One or Great Spirit. And he said, well, how, and he prayed on this, and how can I get them to open up and lighten up a little bit? And it came to him that uh, the uh, term Heoka came to him, and he said, well, Great Spirit, what is that? And they said, we want you to uh, dress up in something really funny, really ridiculous, and go out there and dance a ridiculous dance. You got you break all the rules and laws, and you can uh, do somersaults. Anything you have to do to get them lighten up and uh, and uh, get a, a little bit of humor and, and and start laughing a little, so he did that. And from then on, the uh, all the great tribes had a special uh, division of their medicine. They they called the Hayoka, and it came out that he was uh, a, a, a just as powerful in the spiritual traditions of a of a nation that the, the main medicine person was. And so when I first met Mark, I watched him and said, you know, Mark, you have a, a natu you're a natural Hayoka. And so what did Mark do today to demonstrate this? He brought a sense of humor. He got us to laugh. He got us to relax a little and, uh, and kind of see that uh, to be open, sometimes we have to look at all avenues and all sides. Even the, the side of a diamond does have a, a, a part that has the ridiculous, the, the laughter, and breaks some of the old rigid rules. So thank you, Mark. <laughs> uh, we'd like to open the service up uh, for discussion, feedback, and questions. And I do like to share some general guidelines with you. Uh, we ask the Zoom tribe to stay muted until you're ready to share, and then mute yourself again when you're done. And we might have a person come by with a mic, or you can come up here if you wish to share. And we ask that everyone be mindful of their sharing. Uh, since we have a huge crowd today of hundreds, we'd like you to limit your talk to uh, one minute or two minutes max, so everyone will have enough time. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, Thank you today for this. It was really enjoyable on so many levels. Uh, one of the things I kind of was tickled about in observing myself was my awareness, my deepening awareness of how much I enjoy the unique individualized expression. And so as I was choosing, I found myself looking for uniqueness, <laughs> mm -hmm. my version nonetheless, but that was kind of fun for me to, to realize about myself. Um, I've always enjoyed the rainbow people, people the, the, the folks who express in various different ways and have different approaches to life. And today was that experience for, for me. So thank you to both of you, to all of you. This is Belle. And again, I just feel like I hit the lotto. I am so ecstatic. I can hardly wait to pick up my, my treasure chest. Uh, you know, the other thing that I did once, well, maybe more than once, but, you know, when we look at each other in the mirror, uh, automatically we go to our flaws, 
Uh, we see ourselves as a whole. But I started to narrow it down and I had a stare down with me and I looked it straight into my eyes because they say the eyes are the window to one's soul. And that was really scary at first, but as I got familiar and used to it, I really, I really saw the beauty, the warmth, the love that I was created with. And I think everybody should try that. Have a stare down with themselves in the mirror and look at their soul through their eyes. Thank you, Mark. And I also want to say that even though I'm calm and relaxed and I'm, I've let go, but the week of, of preparing for this was a little stressful. So part of my challenge is how do I get to where I'm at now, how do I do that earlier? How do I trust that somehow everything's going to be okay? And uh, I think part of, that, part of that solution is that I need to work with someone, get some feedback, because sometimes I don't know if I'm on the right track. And I would, if I had someone's presence with me to say, oh, that's good, that's good, then in that shared reality, I can feel relaxed and move, move forward with a, with a happier journey towards this point. So thanks. Um, this is Leslie. I just wanted to say thank you. I'm so glad I was here today. And what an amazing lesson. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. And I wondered, Mark, where you found all those amazing things. Um, it's uh, really neat. Surprise how cheap marbles are. And, and, and the pennies, the so I just got new pennies. And they only cost a penny. <laughs> and a lot of the other stuff is just, you know, it, it, you know, most everything is under a dollar. Most everything is under 25 cents. So it's amazing what little money can do to make, to bring, to have fun. So. But you know what, Mark, you added value to it as soon as you gave it away. Thank you. One of the key points, uh, Mark, I heard you say was reflections, especially of reflections of your oneself when they look in the water. And, you know, most of us came from a background in churches where God was up in the sky, God was at a distance, God was watching you. And it's relatively recently that we've been introduced to the idea that God is within us um, and when we use the words I am and if we say I am God that puts God within us so our relationship with God um, we can probably tell exactly where we're at when we look at that reflection if that is really God looking back at us how is our how are how are our feelings um, if there's unease or uh, something going on that was maybe a, a cue that we should check that out that's what I had um, I just like to say that it was really fun and there's a depth of meaning there on all levels and I appreciate that because I for me so many times just looking for the good and it's hard sometimes but we know it's there it's, and it's sometimes easier to see it in someone else than it is to see it in ourselves but here's the story if you can see it in someone else it's also your reflection mm -hmm. That was beautiful. Thank you. I really like it that you focused on beauty because um, as we see it on the outside, it thrills us when someone relates that the beauty is inside of us, it can terrorize us. <laughs> and it's a great thing to see a simple exercise to relate to the sweetness and the beauty inside us. Thank you. 
I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Here. And in closing, I would like to thank our speaker, Mark, uh, for the meditation and the presentation. I'd like to say thank you, Dave, for your wonderful music. And uh, we would like to close with a peace song, followed by a prayer of protection. Mm. Say the first line and then you will say the second line. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever God is, we are. And that's the truth. And now Dave will share uh, some closing songs. Mm -hmm.